be here this afternoon with the, the third segment of our series. So on Monday, we looked at how eggs were produced. And this, this presentation this afternoon is looking at some abnormalities that you can encounter whenever the eggs are produced. We'll talk about the different features, what causes it, and what can be done at times to help to improve that. So the first one we look at is our shellless eggs, right? So in this egg, whenever you see it, and sometimes it's more common than in other times, but when you see it, the shell, the egg is only protected by the shell membrane. And that's why I gave that lecture on, on a Monday, so that you know how the structure of the egg is to understand the different layers. So the shellless egg has the shell membrane surrounding that um, albumin and yolk, right? And this happens whenever you have an immature shell gland in that hen. And it's a result of diseases such as avian influenza or sometimes infectious bronchitis, New the Newcastle disease virus, or egg drop syndrome 76. So in your younger birds, you might see this occurring because their shell gland has not um, fully developed or their uterus didn't fully develop, so they cannot release those um, calcium crystals to put that shell around it, right? So over time, the, the bird, as it matures, it will start producing those eggs with um, shell. And the second one is that thin shelled eggs. And I put these two close together because sometimes people um, mis misdiagnose that shellless egg for a thin shell egg, right? But the thin shell egg, it has some calcium on it, but it's a very thin layer of calcium that has been added to that shell membrane. So as a result, you try to take that egg up and it cracks immediately in your hand, it caves. No, it might not leak out, but just caves, as you see here in this picture, because it's, it has its shell membrane, but it doesn't have a thick shell casing around it. This mainly happens in older birds. Sometimes there is too much um, phosphorus consumption. That means too much phosphorus is in the diet, the diet wasn't formulated properly. Some mistake may have occurred in the formulation of the feed. Heat stress can also cause this because when, when it is hot, the birds tend to eat less. So they are not getting the amount of nutrients that they, they need in order to produce the way they should. If the water is too salty, that's another thing that can cause this thin layer of shell being added. And also mycotoxins. So mycotoxins will occur if the feed is not stored properly and fungus is allowed to grow in it, right? So when the fungus grow, some of these fungus produces mycotoxins such as aflatoxins, which can cause um, these birds to start laying thin shelled eggs. So if your birds are not very old and you're seeing this, it can be any of the other four, the four last ones that I have listed there. Then we have the slab-sided eggs. These eggs have a flat side. I hope you can see my pointer on the screen. Um, there's a flat section on one side of the egg, right? So you have it here in this one and in this one you can see it here. And this happens when a second egg enters that shell gland. As we spoke about how the egg travels down the oviduct on Monday, I did mention that sometimes you have two eggs. Well, if it enters the shell gland, 
when another egg is already in the shell gland, that second egg that comes in is not completely um, given the amount of calcium that it should get. So the, the section that is touching the first egg, that is flattened. And that is why you have that flat-sided or slab-sided um, um, egg. And this can occur when you have changes in the lighting, right? So if you suddenly, if the lighting suddenly changes for the birds, they have less light than they need in order to, to do their, um, for their reproductive system to, to work, for the ovulation to occur. Or if they have too much lighting too early, this can happen. Disease can cause um, this phenomenon to happen and also stress, right? So if the birds are under stress, whether it's heat stress or they have a lot of, um, say they have some predators outside rushing around, so they feel stressed and scared, these things can cause the bird to open the second egg and all of this happen, cascades. Cracked eggs. This is typified by large cracks or star cracks or hairline cracks that um, sometimes causes a hole to, to form in the shell. If you look closely, you can see the hairline cracks in, in this shell. Now, the first reason I have here is bird age. So as the bird gets older, her calcium production is not as well. So the, the, the amount of calcium that's in these shells are not as, as much as it should be. So it's easier to, to develop these hairline cracks. Heat stress also causes this. Remember, heat stress, the birds start drinking more water, eating less feed, not getting the amount of calcium they need. So that will cause, that can result in that too. Salty water. Remember, if you're having well water, get that tested to make sure that it's not salty so you can take that out as one of the causes, right? And then, of course, calcium and vitamin D deficiency can result in, in these weaker or thinner shelled eggs. And mycotoxin, again, if feed is not stored properly, so you have fungus growing in the feed, can produce these mycotoxins that can, can cause these eggs to not get the amount of calcium that they need, hence you have the cracks. Okay, so the next one is an interesting one. We call this the body checked eggs. And if you look closely, I hope you can see it. If you look closely in that red circle I have there on that egg, you can see that crack, right? So a body check happens when the egg is cracked in the uterus and then it is mended, right? So it, it's cracked inside the uterus and then it is mended. So if you notice this, this whole section here and it goes all around the egg, it's like a, a big band of bandage that goes around it where more calcium is placed over that egg where that crack is. So it has that bulgy look in the midsection of the egg and it's mended before it is laid. And this, you see this more frequently in birds that are older. If the lighting is not correct, you'll have that occurring. If they are stressed or if they are overcrowding in that house, then you will see more incidences of body checked eggs. Calcium deposits on the eggs. And I'm sure you've seen some of these sometimes, maybe not as big as, as even this one, right? This, when you have calcium deposit, this is where you see irregularly shaped calcium on the surface of that eggshell, right? And it happens in all, all different um, color eggs, you'll see it, right? You see it in the brown shell eggs, you see it in the white shell eggs. And it is a result of a defective cell gland. So if the bird did not develop properly, that is why it's so important that you don't, that you, you delay when that hen starts laying, right? We spoke about that on Monday. You can delay when she starts laying. So you don't want her to start producing too early because 
partial gland might be defective or immature. There can also be disturbances during the process of calcification. That's when the calcium is being laid around on that egg, egg that's in the uterus. So if you, are, you have disturbances during that time, the bird might be frightened and stressed. She's, she, she lets out a lot of um, calcium and it's deposited on the shelf. And also excess calcium in the diet can cause these um, calcium deposits. And there are different types of calcium deposits. We'll see some more. Then we have the white or brown speckled eggs. Now you do have some breeds that will have these brown speckled eggs, <clears throat> but these particular breeds that are commercial um, layers they just lay brown eggs. But sometimes you see them with some white spots on them, as in the case of this one, or some brown spots, right? So this happened when the calcium is deposited on the shell before or after the shell is formed, right? And it is caused when you have a defective shell gland or there might be some disturbances during calcification or excess calcium in the diet. So as you notice, it's similar. The reasons that you have these speckled eggs can be just like when you have the calcium deposits. It's the same reasons. We also have pimpled eggs. And I want you to look closely. These eggs are not the same as the calcium deposit. It has small lumps of calcium distributed over the entire shell, right? And the severity of this can depend on the amount of foreign material that is present during calcification, right? So that's the foreign material that's inside of the bird at the time. It can, it can happen, right? And it happens in white-shelled eggs, as you see here, and it can also happen in brown shelled eggs. It's it, um, the age of the bird. You can see it as a result of bird age or their nutrition is not right. There's something inadequate in that nutrition, in that diet, why it is happening to these birds. And it is more common in some strains than others. Okay, so this one is the mottled egg. And this, this um, occurs when the shell fails to dry out quickly. Okay, so when, when the shell fails to dry out quickly, you can see that. And if you look closely at this egg, you can see some little, some little, um, darker looking spots there, right? And it's called a mottled egg, but the best way to see it, is by candling it, right? So this egg, I candled it, I had a, a flashlight just below the egg and shine the light and you can see why they call it mottled. So that's some thinness of the shell throughout all of those spots that are brighter, right? So if you look over again here, you can see, you can big, faintly see them. When you look through the light, you see exactly how muffled that is. And this occur whenever you have high humidity in the house or in the shed, right? So the egg isn't drying out properly and it causes that depletion in the shell. It also occurs when you have overcrowding in that in that shed or in the house. And there are some diseases and mycotoxins can also cause this. And the other thing is manganese deficiency. So it's, it's about the diet, it's about diseases, and it's about stress and humidity. Then we have 
wrinkled eggs, right? So if you look closely at these eggs, you see these lines, they are thin, creased wrinkles, some thicker than some, right? And it's on the surface of the egg. And it is as a result of stress. Sometimes it's overcrowding and overcrowding causes stress. And there's also um, infectious bronchitis. So it's as a result of a disease or sometimes a defective shell gland. Then we have our corrugated eggs, right? So you see here, this section on the egg, how rough and raised it, it looks. This section here, that's called corrugation in the egg. So you have very rough and corrugated surfaces. And this happens when the plumping is not controlled and terminated at the right time. Now, remember the plumping of the egg when you're, when you're going down the, the oviduct of the bird, first it, it puts the white on, then it puts the, the different membranes on. And as it enters into the uterus, it, before it enters into the uterus, it looks like a prune. But when it's coming into the uterus, water is added and fills that out to give you that shelled that shell, that egg looking shape, right? So when this is not controlled or when it stops too early, that's when you get this corrugated look, okay? So it is caused as a result of saline water. The water is too salty. Sometimes heat stress causes it. Poor nutrition, right? So the diet doesn't have in enough calcium and vitamin D mycotoxins, and also the bird age. That, those are things that will cause this corrugated egg. Then we have the misshaped eggs. And misshaped eggs are probably the ones that you would have seen more often, even though people probably overlook the others that I've shown you. But I want you to look out for these eggs, right? So the misshaped eggs are, are not shaped properly. Right, so this one we have a, a very pointy shaped egg, and this one is the opposite, it's very round and it even has this bulge right at the bottom, right at, uh, on one side of the egg. Right, so it is caused as a result of an immature shell gland. Disease and stress also causes misshaped eggs and also overcrowding. Right. So misshaped eggs, even though they, they can be eaten. So if you're not selling it, it's okay. You can, you can eat those eggs. But if it is to be placed in cartons and sold, then they won't fit as easily in those um, egg cartons. Then we have dirty eggs. And these dirty eggs are the eggs that are stained with feces. Now, most of, almost all of these eggs that you see here, I, I obtained them from an egg processing plant. So they have already gone through the wash process. So like these eggs were, are stained by feces and even after the wash, they still have that on it. So this occur when you have a wet drop in, right? The egg has to pass through the cloaca, and the cloaca is that common area for the, the um, digestive system, the reproductive system, and the urinary tract, right? It's a common area, so the egg has to pass through all of the area. However, eggs, when eggs are laid, you, you typically will not get them being stained by a feces, only if the feces is wet. Right, so this occurs if you have a large amount of indigestible compounds in the feed, or if the the bird has poor gut health. Right, so they're having their their droppings is pasty, and um, as a result, you you end up with that. If the water is too salty, that might result in their poor gut health. 
So you want to avoid feed ingredients that will cause sticky and wet feces. And then we have our blood stained eggs. Now this happens in the younger birds, right? So when they just start laying, you can have, you can find a lot of blood stained eggs. And sometimes it's as a result of a prolapse cloaca. So the cloaca is, is being pushed out. So as a result, they, it, they bleed when they actually lay the egg. And it can result in vent pecking and also cannibalism, right? So that is something you have to look out for. Remember, the young pullets, when they just start coming into lay, you can find that problem happening, right? You find that because they are sometimes they're straining to lay, they end up with these blood-stained um, eggs. Uh, or if they are overweight, right? So we had spoken on Monday about the, the correct weight for the birds. And as I said Monday, um, the correct weight will depend on the breed of the bird. So you have to know the breed of your bird and what's the weight you want them to be when they are coming into lay. So if they are weighing too much, you can have that problem too. They're not having enough space because of that extra fat in their abdominal cavity. So they they ended up they end up um, straining and having these blood stained eggs. And also a sudden large increase in day length or two bright lights that can cause these blood stained eggs. For one, if the light is too bright inside of the houses, the birds are more irritated and agitated and they'll peck each other as a result. When they're stressed, they'll peck. If you suddenly increase the day length and they start laying without their body getting a chance to gradually adjust, they'll end up, end up um, having to strain and, and of course, rupturing blood vessels and causing blood stain. Remember, when they are coming in play, it has to be a gradual light increase up to that 14 hours a day, right? Gradually has to increase. It cannot be sudden, suddenly moved from eight hours to 14 hours. And that is the end. So it was a short presentation. I hope that you learned something from, from this presentation. I know you'll be looking out for some of these eggs. Look out for them, take pictures of them, share them. That is it. Thank you, Dr. Dunkley. Um, do we have any questions in the chat? Can you please type your questions or unmute yourself and ask the question? I noticed that we have less people today, and I'm assuming that's because everybody is, they either forgot about it or something mm -hmm. came up. But we have more on that's on inducing a molt. So if nobody has any questions, can we safely assume that there are no questions? All right. Um, good well, afternoon. Uh, uh -huh. uh, one quick question. I missed. I, I from listening to this song say there was a session on Monday. Um uh, was incredible of that. Is there any way we can get info on that session on Monday that was referred to in the presentation? Who's this please? Identify yourself. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. Um uh, Javante Kuko from Long Island. Oh Javante, okay, yes. We have a recording of the session. Each session will be recorded and it's going to be uploaded on the Ministry of Agriculture's website for future reference. So I can okay. send it to you directly, or you can get onto the ministry's website. And I see Debbie is on from the Ministry of Agriculture PR. So I'm pretty sure that these recordings will be made available as, uh, in, within 24 hours. Okay, I appreciate that. No problem. So, so Dr. Dunkley, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Can misshapen eggs or discolored eggs be sold to the public? 
Well, it, it depends on what your organization have as your standards, because I guess I could have spoken some more on egg quality, because those are some of the things that would disqualify an egg to be among the graded eggs, right? So when you're grading eggs, you have, you have, you grade them based on their internal qualities and you also grade them based on their external qualities. So a misshapen egg, uh, a calcium coated egg, if it has more than one eighth of the, the surface of the eggshell, um, by, by our USDA standards, those would not be saleable. Is it edible? It is edible. Is it safe for consumption? It can be safe for consumption, yes, but for commercial sale, it would be graded. It would be a, a, a downgraded egg. So it would not be, it would not be here in the, in the US, you have um, a double A grade, which is the freshest and most supreme looking egg. You have the A grade egg, which is the one that the consumers actually get to buy. And then you have the B grade egg, right? So the difference between these eggs, they are the ones that are sold, right? At the supermarket. But the difference is the, the egg, the air cell, it's larger as the quality goes down. So the one with the smallest air shell is gonna be the freshest one. And that's a double A then the A-grade eggs. So when the supermarkets get them here, they, they get them all as a double A-grade egg, but the consumer is not getting it until it's an A-grade egg. So it's fresh in the box, but based on how they are pushed out in the, in the supermarket, by the time you get it, it's an A-grade egg. A B-grade egg is not sold in the supermarket you can have that in storage and it goes down to that B grade egg. But the, so the, the eggs that has too much calcium on it, those would not be sold. So I, I guess what I'm saying is um, you, each country will set their own standards for what is sold to the consumer. An egg that has a lot of calcium on it or is misshaped, it's still an egg on the inside. That's just the outside. It's just the package. Okay. So while the Bahamas works on its egg grid, we mainly sell, farmers mainly sell through the farmer's market or person, or individual farm. Right. I guess my question <clears throat> is, if these eggs, you already answered, they can be sold, but they should be sold for a different price. Yes. Yes, I would say so, because our farmers market, our small farmers who, you know, small size farmers, they sell at the farmers market too, but they have to be certified by the USDA standards. So they can't, they don't sell those eggs unless they are A and double A grade eggs. So they keep for say home consumption, or they give some to their neighbors, that kind of thing. Okay. So the standard is not just for the, 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 the um, retail supermarket, it's also for the small farmers here. Okay. Uh, are there any more questions in the group? You have some comments, Doc. Great presentation. Once again, great presentation. So I guess word is getting out. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Nick for, Nick Myolas from Abaco Neem Farm in Abaco. Hi, Nick. Yes, this is a wonderful presentation. Unfortunately, we've been in the field the last two days and we missed the first two series. Oh. And we were so happy mm -hmm. that we caught this one. And we were just picking mangoes at, at 5.15 and we said, oh, we got to get back to the cottage. But thank you. Send me some of those mangoes. Uh, <laughs> these are series mangoes. They're not a good... Uh, mango for market, but boy, they are delicious, you know? <laughs> and uh, we love eating them in the sea. But anyway, this has been fantastic. I'm happy to hear that you guys are recording them and where people like ourselves that have missed the first two series can go back and just repeat it and, and learn. 
Uh, very educational. Thank you. And there is another series tomorrow, is there? Yes, yes. there is another session tomorrow. <laughs> and then next week we have a few more. And what is the topic tomorrow? Well, this these were these series are all on increasing table egg production. So okay. tomorrow we'll be touching on inducing a molt. Okay. In yes. layer chickens. In layer birds, yeah. Just for your curiosity, we do feed our chickens uh, the neem cake, and that is the byproduct when we press the fruit to extract the oil. Um, it's a natural dewormer, and it has calcium and magnesium and phosphorus. So, um, and every now and then with our older chickens, yes, we get um, a lot of calcium. We see calcium on it, but very rarely. Okay. But and this is so educational. It's great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Nick. I'm glad you could make it today. Oh, absolutely. Look forward to tomorrow also. I okay. hope the farm is, 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 is coming back. After yes, the farm is uh, coming back. Uh, we, you know, we had over 10,000 trees. We had a 107 variety of fruit and flowering trees. And we've pulled out, unfortunately, a little bit more than 1,100 trees. So, um, but we are very thankful. Our farm looks great. We are ready for tours uh, in the near future, early 2021. We hope to do um, a holistic retreat, eating from farm to table, etc. cetera. You know? um, yeah. Any more questions, guys, before we close off? No? Okay. Dr. Dunkley, once again, thank you so much for taking your time, putting all of this effort into these slides. It's really and truly appreciated by the people of the Bahamas. So I guess we shall see you tomorrow at 5. Okay. All right. It's my pleasure. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.